Thanks, JT. Got it. All right. Um, so that's a little bit about us. And I have a video um, from the director of the Teaching Systems Lab, um, Justin Reich, who couldn't be here today, but wanted to um, say welcome and thank you for coming. So um, this is a little video from Justin, and it, it explains a little bit about what the Teacher Moments platform is and what it was designed for. Um, and why we're so excited that you're here to work on it with us today. So I'm gonna hope that this works and we'll go from there. Hi everyone, my name is Justin Reich. I'm so thrilled that you're here at this workshop today with my colleagues from the Teaching Systems Lab to learn a little bit more about teacher moments. I wanna take a couple minutes to share with you a little bit about where some of the key ideas from teacher moments come from um, and kind of you know what's going on in this community that you're becoming a part of maybe. So there's some great teacher education researchers who have come up with a basic framework for not only how teachers learn, but how people in all kinds of helping professions like nursing and social work and the clergy learn. And there's basically three parts. You see representations of professional practice um, in teaching that might be watching videos that people teach, observing teachers, looking at lesson plans. And then you've got experts who help you decompose, break down those practices. So a novice looking at the beginning of a lesson goes, oh, that's someone starting a lesson. Uh, an expert looking at the same couple of minutes at the start of a lesson goes, no, 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 that's a lesson launch. And it has these characteristics. And when it's done well, it has these qualities. And we can teach you what these qualities are so you can do them. They take the big picture and they break it down into things that can be named and defined. And then ideally, we'd let people practice. Now, in other helping professions, there are all kinds of opportunities for approximation. If you were to try to become a social worker, you would have all sorts of opportunities to therapize you know, your fellow social workers. But for a variety of reasons, when teachers learn, they listen to people talk about teaching, they talk with each other about teaching, but they very rarely do teaching. There are very few opportunities to practice. And so in the MIT Teaching Systems Lab, we aspire to design, implement, and research the future of teacher learning. And we think a big part of that future is creating more opportunities to practice. Now, by no means are we the only people working on this. There are folks who've come up with protocols called rehearsals, which is a little sketch in the top right there, where in a rehearsal, somebody pretends to be a teacher, they do a 10 minute mini lesson, you've got a bunch of other people live in the same room pretending to be students. Our colleague Liz Self uh, does this really cool work actually based on simulations in medical schools. You know, medical schools, they train actors to be patients and then doctors and nurses practice giving care to those patients. We can train actors, live actors to be students or parents or colleagues and have teachers practice uh, interacting with them. There's a group called Mersion, which creates this kind of like digital puppetry simulation where you stand in front of a screen and there's an actor who controls five students and has a voice modulator. So each of the students sounds differently. They're on like an Xbox controller and you can make the kids fall asleep or raise their hands or talk to each other, all kinds of things. So we sort of looked at the whole space that was available for opportunities to practice. And we ended up plotting it on two axes. Um, what kinds of opportunities are digital versus analog? What kind of opportunities try to have you practice the whole of teaching versus opportunities that have you practice just specific parts? And we noticed that there was kind of the space in the top left for opportunities for digital practice, but of more individual skills. Sometimes we make this distinction between practice that's like a scrimmage and practice that's like a drill. There's good reasons to do scrimmages. Coaches and music teachers have people do scrimmages and recitals. But actually, there's lots of research from the science of complex learning that suggests it's really hard for people to do the whole thing in a complex task and get better at individual components. And your coaches and your music teachers knew that intuitively, which is why they didn't have you scrimmage all the time. They broke down specific parts of a sport into drills or specific parts of a piece into, into scales or movements or other smaller things. Let you develop some automaticity, some fluency, some heuristics in those smaller pieces, and then build them back together into the complex assemblage of the whole. That was a big piece of inspiration for creating teacher moments, which lets you practice little moments of teaching, reflect on little moments of teaching. Ideally, they're sort of short, they're repeatable, they're low cost, they're low stakes. The vision that we have for the future of teacher learning is that we create a platform where it's just really easy for teachers to be doing these little bits of practice 
seeing how other teachers do these little bits of practice and then use those shared texts to talk about their practice, to feel more confident as they try new things, to explore their identity as teachers, and to think about how we can serve our students best in the future. So you're gonna get a chance to build a bunch of these things. One of my favorite quotes about learning comes from this book by Benjamin Irwin. Building a robot that works involves building a robot that doesn't work and then figuring out what's wrong with it. Building simulations is the same kind of thing. Building simulations that don't work and then you iterate on them, you improve them, you get feedback and you build things that work better. So you'll have lots of opportunities to rapidly develop things during this workshop, to get feedback, to keep iterating, and hopefully you'll take them out uh, into the world with your students, with your colleagues, with your stakeholders and get a chance to practice. Everything that we create in the lab is open source and openly licensed, so you can reuse it, you can remix it, uh, you can take the stuff that we've developed in Teacher Moments and use it with new audiences in new ways, you can make a fork of the whole Teacher Moments website and build your own Teacher Moments if you want to. Uh, do research with it and tell us how it's working. We're thrilled to have you here, really grateful to be able to start this partnership with you, and just wanted to wish you well in the sessions ahead. I hope you have some great learning and a great chance to share your learning with others. Awesome. Um, so that's, oops, sorry, is that going to start again? We don't need Hi, to everyone. watch it again. My name is Justin. <laughs> All right. Um, so. Hi, me, everyone. No. Hold on. Okay. Sorry, I'm like terrible with um, PowerPoints on Zoom, so I'll just get that out there in the front. And um, thank you for being patient with me. And thank you, as Justin said, for joining us today. I know it's um, a Saturday, and for some people, um, it's lunchtime um, if you're here in Boston, and for some people, it's um, nighttime or really, really early in the morning. So um, we are so thankful that you're here with us today um, to build some simulations. And as Justin said, uh, the goal today is not to build uh, the perfect simulation. The goal today is to um, figure out how we build simulations and to uh, get a sort of prototype together that we are then gonna spend some time working on over the next three weeks together. So um, I'm gonna pass it to Garen, who's gonna talk a little bit about how we have done this kind of workshop before. Great. So. Um... Over the past like two years, 2019 to 21, I was a project lead for a project called Inspire CSAI. Um, AC Lane's in, in, the, in, the, in the meeting today and AC Lane was one of the fellows as a part of that project. So it's great to see you, AC. Um, what we did over that two year period was um, the Teacher Moments platform was sort of in an alpha stage before that project where we could make our own simulations and use them in teacher education. And what we did with the Inspire CSAI program was we transformed the platform to be one of distributed authorship. So we made it so that anybody could create a simulation that they wanted for professional learning. We particularly focus on teacher education, but that platform is actually being used in social work and psychologists and nursing education. So there's a variety of applications to simulation-based learning. But what was nice about this project is I kind of see Inspire CSAI as a proof of concept of building a good research platform that can distribute really complicated research in hopefully a very accessible way. Um, what we did was we piloted the goal of building an audio classifier that could detect confusion in audio responses. And the way in which we did that was we created a, a simulation with a group of Inspire CSAI fellows in this sort of scale slide. And, and basically every fellow implemented um, a, a retrospective self-labeling activity. Every, every student that they served uh, as they went through these simulations listened to their audio responses and indicated when they thought they sounded confused. And through that process, we collected 10,000 audios that are labeled as yes or no in terms of whether or not the person who recorded the audio response thinks that they sound confused. Uh, we've been able to use that data to train a classifier that is attempting to predict confusion and audio expression, constantly revising and making broken robots and fixing them on that process, but uh, we're off to the races with that. But from my perspective, the real power here is not about the question that we asked and the research that we coordinated, but the real power is that we can make a big impact by scaling this kind of research to anyone that wants to try. So that's where you're coming in. So the reason that we've put this event together is to share the platform, the research strategy, the way in which we went about building an audio classifier for confusion, 
and make it so that anybody that wants to engage in this work can. So if you could go to the next slide, Sarah, what, what that would look like is that you, as a part of this work, the series of workshops are gonna be working on setting up your own pilots of simulation-based learning with your own AI measurement goals. And then the idea is that we'll go through this series of workshop and what we're gonna guarantee is that we're gonna make some broken robots. Um, we're not gonna make the perfect classifier. We're not gonna make the perfect simulation, but we'd like to get everyone that is interested into a position where they have a simulation with an AI measurement goal in mind that is ready as a pilot, where you'll have some initial data uh, at the end of the workshop and you'll have a sense of whether or not you wanna start scaling that up. And we've got opportunities for scale. So we have been in close contact with many of the Inspire CSAI fellows, as well as uh, a variety of folks in a variety of contexts. And we run a community of practice event uh, four times a month and everyone's uh, welcome to join that. So if you get a pilot together where you're like, oh, I got a pretty cool simulation and I got a pretty cool measurement goal, you can come to a community of practice meeting, meet with other people and kind of do what we did in Inspire CSAI. You can send that simulation into a variety of contexts, collect a variety of data sources, a lot of data, get some labels and keep improving your classifier over time as you collect more information. And then the impact is, is I, I'm excited. I'm excited about um, what sort of AI findings do you achieve in that, in that work? Um, are you also gonna be focused on equity issues in K-12? And if you are, what do you find out about it? What do you find out about simulation-based learning? There's a lot of research opportunities here, which is why we made a research platform. Um, it, it, it can't be just one group, one place figuring out what to do. It needs to be a distributed effort. And, and I take that from a perspective of thinking about the issues of equity in K-12 education. And those are different across the country, uh, across the world, <laughs> right? So uh, what we wanna do is we wanna empower people to pursue their interests and, and, and explore what they can do in terms of using simulations to tackle these large equity issues uh, and then empower them to connect with a community of like-minded people that are interested in how can we improve those social interactions? All right, let's go to the next slide. So we have three sessions organized for this purpose and today is session one. And in session one, our, our focus is really gonna be working on creating an equity focused teacher education simulation if you're from another discipline, that doesn't matter. Make, make a simulation about the group that you're working with. Um, but the important part to today is also coming up with a good annotation question. So if you remember, in Inspire CSAI, I asked everyone to label their own audio asking the question, did you sound confused, yes or no? And then I'm using those labels to train a classifier. So we'd like, like today for you to get through a very basic simulation. Again, it's gonna be a broken robot. We don't have to worry about the perfect simulation. We just want a simulation. And then what's your measurement goal in that? And then how can we start thinking about getting some initial data collection, which we've baked into this process of the workshop series. And then how do you start scaling that out, which we have support for with our community of practice. In session two, what we're gonna do is actually before the session happens, we're gonna take all the data that's been collected and train a bunch of classifiers from the data that you've collected and deploy them into the system. And then in session two, we're gonna walk you through the process that we did. So if you can keep pace, if you're like a machine learning expert, you're probably gonna feel like some of the things that we're doing are a little bit entry level, but what you'll learn is how do I download data from teacher moments that I've collected in terms of annotations and connect that into a notebook and run a classifier of either text or audio responses and then, and then train that classifier and deploy it to the system. So we'll walk you through that process in, in workshop two. We're doing this because that's our projected uh, next phase of development for the, for the platform is to do automated training of classifiers, as well as um, increasing the transparency into the accuracy and the bias of those classifiers so that people can make informed decisions about where they might wanna use classifiers in their own simulation-based learning. Session three, is gonna be real fun. Um, at this point, all of the classifiers that we've started or began looking into as a part of this workshop series will be in the system. So whatever you come up with today in terms of your an annotation question is gonna be deployed and integrated into the teacher moment system um, before workshop three. And at that point, we're gonna ask if we could detect, so in my, my case, in my example, if I could detect when someone sounds confused, what kind of dynamic support might I want to provide? And so this is a great space for people that are interested in like learning design, um, thinking about what kind of supports do people need? 
um, how am I predicting what they need? And, and then, and then, and then we'll, we'll make a version of the simulation that has dynamic supports that are triggered off your classifier. Again, broken robots. The classifiers won't be perfect. The supports won't be perfect, um, but we'll have a great chance at sort of getting something off the ground and running with it. Um, and then the notion is that over time, as you start scaling up your implementations, you'll get more data. As you get more data, you'll improve your classifiers. And as you improve your classifiers, you'll get a clear line on site on whether or not that dynamic support is useful. One of the ways that you'll get that clear line of sight is that in session three, we're gonna help you set up an A-B test, which basically means you're gonna set it up so that half of your participants get a dynamic support based on AI and half of your participants don't have any dynamic supports at all. And then you can check to see through statistical analysis and research methods or however you wanna measure the impact, if that dynamic support is making a change in the learning outcome of your students. So that's the vision of this set of workshops. And again, what we're trying to do over the sequence of three events is what we intend on building as the next version of the system. So throughout this process, we're gonna administer things like exit surveys from the workshop to get your feedback, to hear how things are going. And we're gonna use that feedback to inform some of the decisions that we make in terms of how we're gonna be designing uh, the future versions of, of the platform and how we can better support people that wanna do research in education that want to look into simulation-based learning, that want to learn more about how do I use AI and how does AI support learning through dynamic supports. This is a, an excellent chance for you to get some really, really good entry-level uh, connections to that with our platform. But if you're an expert already, we're, we're happy to have you. Like you can, you can shoot right past some of our agenda items. Um, while we'll help you train classifiers, we'll use some really, really basic techniques for that. But maybe you're like, no, I know a bunch of very, very sophisticated approaches to text and audio processing. Awesome, like that. We're not, we're not holding you back. You're gonna have the time to do that. Um, we'll do whatever we need to help to support the deployment of that. And as Justin said at the top, if you're like, wait, I don't wanna put this on the teacher moment system. I wanna manage my own research platform. Awesome, it's open source. Um, I'm happy to meet up with anyone that's interested in creating an installation of teacher moments for their site. Um, and you're also welcome to use ours. Uh, so it's really, really about fostering a community of researchers around an interesting research platform that's been designed to support this set of steps. And then we're, we're going to be using what we get as an outcome from these workshops to inform how we move the platform forward. Okay, next slide. All right, so uh, if you had a chance, we're gonna, you know, we sent you an email to ask if you could go into the Teacher Moments platform before the session. If you didn't, that's fine. Um, but on this slide, there's a link to the Teacher Moments platform. And this is the platform that we're using to author simulations. Um, okay, so what I'd like to do is maybe just, is the next slide the one that gives people information to log in, Sarah? Oh, here's our agenda. Our agenda today is we're gonna have small groups of equity, uh, so we want to organize people around the topics of equity that they're going to be focused on. Uh, so our vision is that we might organize people around uh, collaboration. Uh, so you could work in a team or you can work by yourself. Either is fine. Uh, we're going to go over the components of practice spaces and authoring. Uh, we're going to determine authoring groups. We're going to move into designing a scenario. And then we're going to think about that annotation question. What's the AI that we want to train? Uh, and then at the end, you're gonna update a, a Google slide deck with a link to the simulation that you created. And we're gonna use that slide deck of the Firehose slide of simulations to send this around to our communities, our networks. All of us can send these around to our communities and networks. And between workshop one and two, we're gonna get some data and responses, which is gonna help us when we think about training classifiers for session two. And at the end of the day, there's gonna be an exit ticket, like I said, to help us learn and, and improve the system. So let's move on to the next slide. So introductions to small groups. What we'd like to do is we've created a spreadsheet that lets you um, enter uh, an, an issue of equity that you think is interesting. So we see the work that we're doing as really oriented around issues of equity. Um, we think about that topic broadly. So we don't have like a fixed set of these are the equity issues. Um, earlier, we sent an email asking if you could go to the spreadsheet and add a topic. Uh, Sarah, could you open up the spreadsheet and show people what we're going to be doing next? Yep. So um, some people have already started adding um, topics that they're interested in, which is amazing. Um, 
And here, let me grab, oh, can I grab the, can I grab this to share? Um, so a couple, so um, I just popped in the chat, but if you haven't had a chance to, um, if you haven't had a chance to make a Teacher Moments account, now is a great time to do that. It's just teachermoments.mit.edu, um, which I popped into the chat. And here is a link to this spreadsheet. So um, we are just brainstorming um, as one does when one brainstorms as many topics as sort of you can think of that you're interested in. Um, and then what we are going to do is have you choose a topic that you're interested in thinking about over the course of these three workshops. And again, the goal is to make a starter scenario um, and to really teach you what to do so that then if you're interested in 10 of the things on this list, you can go and make scenarios for all 10 um, of these things. But for today and for this set of workshops, we're gonna to try to pick one that you feel most interested in. And then we're gonna hop into breakout rooms and I will, um, yes, yeah, so you can share a username um, to the chat. That's really fine. And Garen and I will grab it and give you privileges. Um, so um, I'm gonna share the number of the breakout rooms and then uh, we're gonna have some time for you to go into the breakout room for the topic that you're interested in and introduce yourself to the people in that room. And you may be sort of looking for a partner that you can author a scenario with or a couple of people, or you may kind of know what you wanna do and you're here to work on something in particular and you don't wanna work with a partner and that's totally fine. Um, but it is nice to just, this is our way to sort of introduce ourselves to each other and get a sense of the community that's here today. So um, if you can take a couple minutes to pop any other topics that you're interested in or to just read through these topics on the spreadsheet, the spreadsheet link is, whoops. Um, I meant to put it in the chat, but it looks like I just sent it to JT. So JT, I'm really glad you have that, but I'm gonna send it to everybody now. <laughs> so um, take a minute, hop into this spreadsheet, uh, put down more, topics that you are interested in, take a look at the topics that are already there. And then in a couple minutes, we are going to have you pop into those breakout rooms. So I'm going to go back to um, our slideshow because it looks like folks are popping in here and can see it now. Yeah. And and if you put your names and you and there's a topic that you would like to work on today, put your name in the in the uh, columns to the right so that we can figure out what sort of groups of people might want to work together today. And we'd like to just connect people on collaboration around similar topics. And again, if you want to work on your own, that's fine. Or if you want to work in a group, that's great. Um, one of the reasons why we organize the event in conjunction with the Learning Analytics Learning Network is that we are, we, we recruited people that have backgrounds and interest in teacher education, people that have backgrounds and interest in analytics research, um, and we feel like there's a nice blend of skills there uh, between uh, folks that maybe understand a little bit about the pedagogical approaches and simulation-based learning. And there's some skills there around folks that understand um, interesting analytics approaches. And so we're hoping that there's an opportunity for at least a few groups to form that might end up with some folks from both of those uh, approaches. And that collaboration might be really, really fruitful. Uh, folks are already starting to uh, fill in those name boxes, which is great. Um, Garen and I are going through and making sure these new usernames uh, have privileges. Make sure, um, make sure when you pop your username in that you've already gone to Teacher Moments and registered with that username. Uh, we can't create the account for you, but you can create an account yourself very easily. And then we're going to make sure. Yeah. Sorry. And we'll make sure that everyone has the privileges while we put you into breakout rooms and, and talk to the people that have shared interests and what you might want to tackle. And then we'll get back together and start talking about creating the simulation. So let's take a minute or two to just um, pick a topic that you're interested in. Um, and then I'm gonna make the breakout rooms based on where I see the names. So it may be that um, some topics we don't have folks for today, that's totally okay. Um, so just, if you're interested in a topic, make sure you sign up so I know to make a breakout room.
Yeah, you can you can put your name in more than one topic, but uh, what we might do is we're going to organize you and you can't be in more than one room at a time. So, you know, if there's one that seems to be the most important to you, then then just put your name in that one. If not, we'll just check in as we start assigning people to rooms for small group discussions. Yeah, and I'm actually just going to make the breakout rooms and folks can decide where they go. So oh, um, if you're in a lonely, if you're in a lonely topic right now, um, just pick a breakout room and go and say hello. And maybe you'll hear something that you decide you want to work on instead, or maybe you'll work on that topic yourself. That's okay. Um, and I'm going to let people choose sort of where they go. And hopefully you will go to um, go to the room that you're interested in the topic so that you can maybe find um, a rating partner. So. Okay, I am going to make seven breakout rooms and I have uh, put the numbers next to the groups. And I think I got every group that had two, what group number one has disappeared, that's okay. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna open these and find the room that you are interested in going to. Okay, and we're gonna have probably about 10 minutes in your room to introduce yourself. Um, we have just a couple of suggestions here. What's your name and your role? What brought you to this workshop? And why are you interested in this topic? So these rooms are small, so you should hopefully get a chance to chat and let people know, um, know who you are. All right, so I think we can go ahead and join a breakout room and the numbers are in that spreadsheet. And Garen's gonna talk to us. <laughs> Garen's gonna talk to us a little bit more um, about practice spaces and um, what we're gonna do today. Great. So yeah, um, you'll notice that that practice space wasn't like what it would be like in real life. It wasn't the complexity that you would actually have if you really were getting on a phone call with a parent after students had conducted some form of a protest. You probably were asking yourself, there wasn't enough detail in the simulation. I couldn't quite make the right decisions. Um, that's true. Um, and I think that that's also partly true in life. In life, we don't always have all of the details that we need uh, to work on the sim simulations. Uh, so what I'd like to say is that what we're trying to do here, if you look at this slide, is when teachers are preparing for practice, uh, often they have seminars. So there's sort of discussions about pedagogy. As Justin said earlier, we talk about teaching, um, but we don't always do teaching. Um, and when we do teaching in teacher preparation programs, it's typically in the form of a practicum. And that's when a pre-service teacher as part of their master's program would go into a classroom and actually practice teaching. Now that's the complex assemblage. That's when everything is together in, at one time. And I use these two pictures of what it looks like in a seminar and what it looks like in a classroom to underscore how different those places are. <clears throat> so in a seminar, you're sitting in a, at a, <laughs> in, a, in a seminar room, you have books, you're discussing, you're raising hands, you're taking turns. Um, and in a classroom, we have an example of a teacher working with balloon animals <laughs> with young kids. Uh, so those two things couldn't be further from apart if, if we tried. Uh, and, and that's true. Classrooms are, are really, really complex situations. Um, what we're trying to do with teacher moments is find those moments of high stakes interactions that may happen in a classroom and give people a chance to practice them before they end up in those high stakes settings. Uh, so you just went through an exercise where you were responding to a concerned parent. Teachers do this all of the time. Um, and what happens next really depends on how you respond and deal with the situation. Uh, so we'd like to give people an opportunity to practice those conflict conversations and find a way to be prepared uh, before they end up in the high stakes situation. And that's why we're working on practice spaces. That's why we're working on teacher moments is to give people a chance to do that. And you'll notice that with this simulation, it was very short. It was four slides. You got a little bit of context. 
You thought about what might happen, you had one interaction with the student, and then you reflected on that interaction. Um, and, and so what, what's interesting there is, is there's a chance for you to really start thinking through some of these problems in a low stakes setting. Um, you can do it again, you could try it over. Um, these things could be longer. What you just played was a simulation that was thrown together in like 10 minutes while I was working on a workshop with folks. Some of the simulations that we've worked on are on like their 27th version and we've been using them for years in MOOC courses and in teacher professional development settings. Uh, so these things get better with time. Uh, so you'll, you'll probably be like, oh, that one wasn't great or perfect. And no, it wasn't. Um, it's a broken robot. But we used it as an example today because that's our hope today is that all of you will have a chance to make like a four slide simulation or more if you have the time. Uh, and, then, uh, and then we'll move from there. So let's go to the next slide, Sarah. So basically what we're gonna do in session one is in the platform, we're gonna work on anticipate questions like you experienced with the simulation. We're gonna work on enacts, which are basically um, practicing a social interaction and then reflections. And with the reflections, we're, we're gonna be working with something called the annotation component, which lets you ask a yes or no question that allows you to collect uh, labeled data uh, on the responses from your simulation that you can use for training. Uh, any sort of machine learning classifier of text or audio nature. Uh, so obviously, if you made a simulation with four responses and you had them annotate all four responses at the end, you'd get four responses that are labeled per participant. Uh, so there's reasons to think about maybe making more than one response, um, but just one is enough. One is enough for us to get going with something and see where it goes. Um, certainly, it's not gonna make a high quality machine learning classifier at that point, um, but our point today and, and over the course of these workshops is to illustrate the process. Uh, and then the hope is that you have the tools to move forward to do this research and continue to collect data and train classifiers or leverage the system to train classifiers for you as we build that functionality in uh, to work towards building dynamic simulations for any sort of professional development setting. Uh, next slide. In session two, as we said before, what we're gonna work on is the actual training of the classifiers. So we're going to point you to some GitHub scripts that download data from teacher moments that you'll have access to, and then train a classifier that either predicts a binary value for text or audio based on the annotation question that you create in session one. And then in the next slide, in session three, what we're gonna be doing is thinking about how to build dynamic supports that are triggered off of the classifier. So if you're able to detect something, like I said before, I worked on confusion. If I think somebody sounds confused, I might provide them with a little bit of information that might help them resolve that confusion. Uh, so whatever it is that you're thinking about training, uh, you can also at this stage, just start thinking what's a good thing to measure would be where would I might want to dynamically respond during the simulation in the future? Uh, so that's what your annotation question should really be focused on. Uh, next slide. So we've mentioned that we focus on equity uh, in all of our research. And on the next slide, we illustrate the equity framework that we typically think about as we work on these simulations. So this comes from Mitch, uh, Rich Milner's um, Educator Mindsets book. There's a book called Start Where You Are, But Don't Stay There. And Rich Milner details a series of mindsets uh, that folks may have when they're in a classroom. So equity versus equality. So do I treat everyone the same or do I, change how I support people based on their individual needs, um, asset versus de deficit mindset. So deficit framing would be something like, oh, you're not ready to do this yet, or you can't do this. Um, asset framing is much more like leaning into the strengths that they have to tackle the challenges that they're facing. Um, aware and avoidant um, is whether or not you're willing to uh, consider or race or demographics um, when you're interacting with someone or if you try to ignore things like race and demographics, context-centered versus context-neutral. Um, part of the reason why we let people author their own simulations is so they can make simulations that fit within the context where they're teaching. Uh, so you might want to think about how you shape that first context slide if you wanna think about how you're contextualizing things, but a context-neutral approach would be like you're in a generic high school setting with freshmen without giving any more context details. Uh, so all of these things are things that you can consider uh, that might influence the designs. It's not required. It's just something as a support. You can always come back and look at this later, and we can also point you to more resources on this topic. 
Uh, on the next slide. So now we'd like to get people into authoring groups. Uh, so again, our goal today is to have Actually, folks. Oh, sorry, Garen, we're going to take a quick break just because we've oh, been at the screen. Oh, around. So we're going <laughs> to um, yeah. we're going to take a quick break and we'll come back around. Um, it's 1.10 my time here, but I don't know what time it is for you, but it will end with a 10. Um, so we're going to take like a six or seven minute break and then we will okay. come back. And as Garen said, we're going to choose authoring groups. So awesome. Welcome back everybody. So um, as Garen said, we are going to move into um, choosing authoring groups. And as we said before, if you want to author yourself, that's totally fine. Um, if you want to author in a pair, that's totally fine. If you want to author in a bigger group, that's totally fine. Um, so we're going to spend the next um, 15 minutes or so, 15 to 20 minutes getting into our groups and then starting to think about what is it that you want to work on? What is it that you want your scenario to be about? Um, and the goal is to come out of this time knowing who is working uh, in your group and a little bit about what you are working on. So to that end, um, I am going to just pop a link into the chat here. We have another slideshow that is our fire hose slides where we can very quickly sort of learn what everyone is thinking about doing. And so um, on the screen here is just an example of one of the slides in the fire hose slide deck. And our goal uh, for the next 10 or 15 minutes is to definitely have the authors. <laughs> um, that's what I've circled here. So you definitely wanna be able to fill in the authors and then hopefully, um, whether you're working on your own or whether you're working with other people, you can start to think about these other questions on here. What's the title you want to put on? And it doesn't have to be a perfect title. It can be, you know, scenario about X for right now. Um, what's the problem of practice? What's the sort of equity problem that you want to solve? And then a short description. Um, Garen, do you want to talk anything about what those things mean? Yeah, so I think that what we try to encourage is for people to think about how to support equity in whatever setting that you're working on. And so we just think that the more that you can think about that up front, uh, the better that's going to guide the authoring uh, process uh, is to really get a clear sense of what's the equity dimension that you care about. Um, a short description is just sort of like if somebody were to, you know, hey, I want to try a simulation, which one should I try? Um, this is where you'll be sort of advertising uh, your simulation. Uh, our hope is that after this workshop, um, sometime tomorrow, we're going to send out this slide deck to our, a lot of networks and encourage people to go out and try the simulations that you're working on. So you'll have a chance at the end of the workshop today to update this. So don't feel like this has to be a permanent decision right now. Um, but just we're trying to get a sense of who's going to be working together, what are they going to be working on. Um, and, and then in, at the end of the, the session, you'll we'll, next we'll work on authoring the simulation, and then we'll put a link to the simulation on the fire hose slide. Uh, and so that's gonna be really what we'll focus on for the remainder of our, our workshop today. Uh, so yeah, it'd be great if you could just start thinking about what's the group that I wanna work with? Um, who am I gonna be authoring with? Do I wanna work by myself? Do I wanna work with a group? Um, and then start putting some details into what's the title? What's the equity dimension? What's a short description? So with that in mind, I'm gonna pop our spreadsheet um, back in to the chat and our goal for now is if you want to author by yourself then you are ready to start working on your fire hose slide um, and you can fill in as much as you feel confident about at the moment um, and then if you want you can sort of start taking a look through other slides if you are not interested in authoring on your own and you'd like to have a co-author or multiple co-authors for your scenario um, we're going to pop, I'm going to open up those breakout rooms again, and that's why I shared this, the spreadsheet again so you can see what those breakout room numbers are. We'll keep the same ones as before just to make it easy. And then once you are in your group, and it may be that it's a big group, um, and it may be that you need to come back to the main room to tell us that you need another breakout room. So I know some of those rooms had like seven or eight people in them. You probably don't want to author with seven or eight people. Um, and so if you and your partners just come back here, um, we can have another breakout room available for you. 
Um, and then in each group, one thing that's important is that only one person can be authoring a scenario, right, Garen? Only one person can be actually physically editing a scenario at a time. So you probably want to pick who's the sort of person who's going to be typing on the computer during this um, synchronous time together. So um, I'm going to set the breakout rooms and I'm going to open those up again. And you can choose where you are headed if you're looking to work with a partner. And again, if you're not looking to work with a partner, then you can um, simply choose a fire host slide and get started. And Garen and I are going to stay here in the main session. If you have any questions, if you have a smaller group and you need a new breakout room, um, we are here to help with that, with anything that you need. All right, welcome back. Um, hope you had a productive time uh, in your groups. And remember the goal for that was to find your authoring group. So if you have found your authoring group then you are exactly where you need to be, um, we're gonna go back to those fire host slides in just a little bit. Um, but first we're gonna talk about uh, actually authoring in the platform. And so um, hopefully you have decided the person in your group who is going to do the physical um, authoring of the slides, because as we said, unfortunately, um, Teacher Moments is not like Google Slides where multiple people can be editing at the same time. Um, so if your group didn't decide that, maybe like just pop into the chat if you wanna grab that job um, and then your group mates will know um, who's gonna do the physical authoring of the scenario because that is what we were about to do, which is very exciting. So. Um, what we need to do, oh, first we're gonna just go through, um, we've talked about this a little bit and you actually did um, the scenario that Garen had made very quickly. So we start with context, what is happening, right? What is the context that people need to know? And then we move to anticipate. You ask people a question about what they think might happen. Um, and we're gonna talk about sort of what can go on each one of these slides, but right now we're just kind of walking through what those slides are. Enact is where they actually do something. As Garen said, it's some kind of social interaction. It could be a conversation or it could be something that they write. And then uh, we move to reflection. What is it that you want them to think about as they're finishing? Could be reflection on how they did or on what happened, what they decided to do. So those are sort of the four slides that we're looking to put together today. Um, and I know that some groups, uh, it sounds like some groups have ambitions to do sort of multiple slides. Like that's amazing. <laughs> that's so exciting. All you have to do today is those is those four. The thing a simulation needs is just four slides, one for each of those. Um, and you'll have time to keep sort of building this out. But our goal is um, by this time tomorrow that you have four slides um, for these categories. So that's what we're moving into now. Um, so just some nuts and bolts data, or sorry, not data, but nuts and bolts things here. Um, we need at least the person who's going to be the author who types to go to teacher, this is teachermoments.mit.edu. Garen, will you drop that in the chat? So back to teachermoments.mit.edu. And then definitely the person who's gonna be in charge of authoring wants to do this. If everybody wants to do this, just to follow along and kind of get a sense of what it means to create a scenario, then absolutely feel free for everyone to do this. Well, you'll just have sort of one official scenario um, that somebody in your group has volunteered to type up. So first step, search for L-A-L-N. And then you're going to make a copy of the scenario. And everyone at this point should have authoring privileges so that you should be able to make a copy. If you run into a problem where you're not able to, just pop it into the chat. Um, and Garen and I can make sure that you get those authoring privileges. Okay, so this is step one, we're searching for L-A-L-N. And then step two, we're making a copy of the scenario called template for L-A-L-N, February 5th. This is a blank scenario that has those four slides in it along with directions, okay? Um, you need to make a name for your scenario. Put something where you'll be able to find it. 
Um, and remember, you can always change this name later. So if it's just, you know, um, the members of your group or something like that, if you already have a title, I know some folks in the Firehost slides, I saw people were typing in titles. So if you already have that title, that's fabulous. If you don't, just name it something. Um, and same for the description. If you already have a description of what it's about, you've already talked about that, write in a little bit there. It can be changed later. All of this can be changed later. So that's the next step. And it's hard because I can't see you and what you're all doing. So if um, I'm going too fast, like please pop in the chat, like, oh my God, go back to this slide. Um, and also feel free to be like, I'm like six slides ahead right now. So let's move it on. Okay. All right. An important step is that you want to give your co authors access to this scenario. Okay. So you'll see a collaborators section after you on the opposite side of the page from the title and the description. So make sure, take a look. You want to type your co authors in. And this is something if you're not sure what their username is or things like that, that's okay. If you don't remember, this can be done later when you're all working together in about 15 minutes. We're going to have time to go back into those groups. But if you know anybody's name, this is something that you're going to want to do so that they have access to authoring this. Okay. And then once you see them, you want to make them an author there. So if you know your co-authors email or username, this is a time to make them a co-author on this scenario. If you don't know that information now, that is okay because you will be back in your groups in just a little bit. Okay, and then the next step, which we're actually gonna take a break from, is that each of these slides has information about what you should do on each of them and some suggestions. So when it is time for you to go back into your groups, you can just follow the directions on these slides. Our goal is to make it make this as sort of easy as possible. Um, and if you're uh, if you've already authored before, if you're a pro and you want to just ignore all of these directions, that is totally fine. You do not have to use the directions on these slides. They're just there to help you. Um, if this is your first time authoring, if you need a little extra guidance. Okay, so do not feel tied down by the directions on here. They're just a support if you need them. Okay, so I'm just going to really briefly go through um, what each slide is. And a lot of this information is, is baked into the directions that are in the scenario slides. So they're on my slides here, but they're also in the Teacher Moments platform on the slides that you just copied. So um, don't, don't worry if you don't get it all from here. Um, so context slide, just thinking what do participants need to know? And as Garen said, it's okay, you're not gonna be able to fill out every, right? You're not gonna be able to fill out every single thing and describe the school and the classroom and the teacher and the kid and their home life and their soccer practice, right? It's okay. Um, just what's sort of the basics that somebody needs to know to understand what's happening. Um, and so we've given some examples of what we do when we're presenting context. Sometimes when we spend months developing a scenario, we might have um, images and graphics and things like that. Um, if you have time in the next 24 hours and you really wanna do that, like that's fine, but you just need to write up a short description of what it is that people need to know. Where are they? Who are the characters involved? It doesn't have to be very long. The anticipate slide, it's kind of up to you. Now this is where um, we might start sort of branching off. Some people ask their participants to think about what's going to happen. Right, so um, if there's a, a conversation coming up, what do you think the other person might say? Um, what do you think, if it's a conversation with a student, how do you think that might go? How, how do you think you might best support that student? Um, some people choose instead for anticipate to think about sort of equity questions, um, sort of questions related to their equity topic, like how can teachers best support students? What role do teachers play in group work? Um, these are some that we've seen before, um, you know, what role does effort play in student success? So if there's a big topic that you want people thinking about, maybe that's what you do with the anticipate slides. So it's really kind of up to your group. What is the problem that you're trying to address? And what is it that you want to know from the people who are doing this? What's the data you want to collect? Do you want something that's about sort of a high level topic? Do you want them to be thinking about what's going to happen next in the scenario? So this is where the sort of design principles come in. What is it that you want folks thinking about 
before they jump into enacting, which is the next part. Enact is what happens in your scenario. You're going to give them something to respond to. So oftentimes it's a conversation. Um, it might be sometimes it's a piece of student work um, made up that we've created. Um, and one thing that's really important here that's going to set you up for the next few workshops is think about, do you want them to respond in text? Are you interested in looking at things like topic modeling, um, natural language processing? We're gonna have some TSL folks come and talk to us about that. So think, are you looking to build a classifier that's gonna be analyzing text? Or are you gonna be looking uh, for something like Garen's confusion classifier, which analyzes audio? So that's really the thing to, to think about here. Based on what you want your classifier to be looking at, just make sure that you have participants responding in that way. Okay. And then the reflection slide um, is something that people will reflect on. So again, it could be um, something that happened in the scenario. You can have them reflect on what they did and how they responded. You could have them reflect on whether their thoughts have changed since their anticipation question. Um, so it's again here, what is the kind of data that you're looking for from your participants? What do you want them thinking about? And what do you want to know about their thinking on this reflect slide? So those are the four basic pieces. Um, again, nothing here has to be super built out. Um, you shouldn't necessarily need to add any components. There's a rich text editor on all of these slides where you can just change the text that's on there and put in your own. Um, or if you are super excited about the different components and you feel like you really have this down, you can obviously do whatever you want to do. So it can be as complex or as simple as you have the bandwidth um, for today and tomorrow. And then uh, all scenarios need these four pieces. But our scenarios also have an annotation component, which Garen is going to talk to us a little bit about. And then we're going to go back into those authoring groups and you're going to have some time to start building your scenario. So the last piece that you're going to work on is an annotation component. And, and what that will do at the end is let you author one yes or no question and associate however many of the responses that you have within your simulation to the annotation question. So the idea behind this is, again, working toward building a text or an audio classifier that can ultimately be used to provide a real-time support. So when you think about your simulation, you think about if someone was going through that simulated experience, what might they say where I would want to step in and provide them with some real-time help? Um, and that's a great way to think about upfront annotation question design. It's just a yes or no question. So for me, it was, do you sound confused? Um, I, you know, it could be anything though. Uh, so the idea here is that folks will be annotating their data at the end. And then those annotations where people have reflected on their own responses will ultimately be used to train either a text or an audio classifier for future dynamic supports within simulation. By the time we get to workshop three, you're actually gonna have your classifier. It will have been deployed and you'll be using some dynamic support authoring based on your classifier's prediction. Now, will we get high level production quality classifiers? No, uh, what we'll get is the whole cycle of, of the development process. Uh, so really, this is a great time for you to think about what that right upfront annotation question is. If you're like, I don't know, I don't know what kind of annotation question I should ask, just try something. And we've, we've built the process so that in session two, if you give an annotation question like, um, does your answer involve giraffes, yes or no? And like, everybody says no, we obviously can't build a classifier from that. Um, so in session two, what we're gonna do is topic modeling on the data that comes back. And we can use that topic modeling to figure out how to revise that annotation question. So again, this is low stakes. Don't worry if you don't come up with the right question. In session two, we will help you find the right question. Uh, but just start with something. Start with something that you think is reasonable, um, something that somebody might say uh, while they're responding to your simulation. So uh, we have time for authoring and I'm gonna open up those breakout rooms again. And we'll always have somebody here in the main room for office hours. Um, if you have questions and you wanna, if you have a question, you need to come to us, but I think we'll also do some popping into rooms like we did the last time so that we can come in and see if you have any questions. So uh, we have about 30 minutes to work on these. 
And as you are going through, come back if you have any questions or if you're running into any, whether you have content questions, like you're not sure what to put in your scenario or whether you have any platform questions um, about teacher moments. So we want to help as much as we can. So I'm gonna open those breakout rooms and you can pop back in. If your group ends up moving into smaller groups, that's okay, come back and we'll give you another breakout room. We're here if you need us. Sarah, do you wanna just go ahead and present the fire hose and we can like step through the slides? So one of the great things about authoring on this simulation is you can actually remix any simulation that's been authored. So if you see something that somebody's working on and you're like, that looks cool, but I'd like to change it a little bit for my context, you can actually go and find these simulations, make a copy and start customizing it and contextualizing it for your needs, which is exciting. So it's very much like a remix and share sort of situation for the platform. Uh, so it looks like Teacher Moments Group One uh, is working on a dilemma related to cyberbullying. Um, that's fantastic. Um, I had a chance to hear some of the conversations around that, and it sounded like a really rich design. I'm very excited to see how this comes along. Um, and, and let's go ahead and move on to the next group and see what the next topic is. Um, how teachers interpret ed tech dashboards. Ah, that's, that's a fun topic. Um, there's that, actually, there's some articles that I could share on that topic. Um, Hendrik Dashler over at uh, the Open University in the Netherlands, I think it is, or I can't remember where, where it's at, but it's the Olulu University, I think. Uh, he's, he does research on this topic. He'd be a great person to look at in terms of the work. Um, but yeah, I love it. I love dashboards. I love thinking about how we might better use or understand or design them um, and what their purpose and, and how teachers are actually using them and adopting them. It's fantastic. Can I see the next one, Sarah? Is this an extension of the last, I think, a dashboard sample? Okay. TM5, how to teach marginalized low-income family students uh, data literacy. That's fantastic. I love it. Um, certainly some interesting challenges to face there, uh, and it's very exciting. Um, again, this is just, but you can see how the range of equity issues that we're thinking about, um, technology adoption in the classroom, cyberbullying, data literacy, um, these are all going after very different things, but uh, we can potentially gain some insights about how to design these simulations, how to detect responses within them, uh, how to build supports around them, and all of it through a common platform, which is exciting. Uh, let's see the next one, Sarah. STEM identity. Don't talk about STEM with me. Uh, actually, one of our colleagues, Greg, has a really strong uh, area of research on uh, students' math identity. Uh, there's a lot of work going on in this area. Oh, it's Amy and AC, you know. Um, I, we've, I've been working with Amy and AC for two years, uh, and they're pros on the platform, so I, I don't think I need to give any guidance or support on this, but uh, I'm excited to see what you're up to and what you're going to make with this, um, and it'll be fun to see. Um, was that the fourth, was there a fifth group, or is it, was that the, I think that was the, that's the rate. That's, that's great. Like yeah, so so what Sarah's going to walk us through today is how do we update these fire host slides so that you can create a cohort link that shares the simulation that you're working on. You don't have to be done with your simulation right now, but we may as well make the cohort links now that lets you share them. Um, the point is you're going to have until 3 p.m. tomorrow to finish these simulations. And again, our only expectation or hope is that you have context, anticipate, enact, reflect, and that there's an annotation question at the end that's either coding yes or no questions on text or audio so that you're set up for the next workshop. So Sarah, do you wanna walk us through how to create a cohort? I do. So um, this is, again, whoever in your group kind of owns your scenario is the person who created it should um, do this, although anyone um, who wants to walk through the process of creating a cohort is welcome to do this as well. Um, and you can, anybody can put your scenario in your cohort 
um, once it's actually published. So you can have your own cohort with this scenario, but um, for our data collection purposes, um, we're gonna ask you to have just one cohort that we share with everybody um, so that we can, uh, we can keep the data collected. And what's cool is that what a cohort does is that it kind of builds a wall around your data. Um, so the reason that we're putting this in a cohort is that other people might find your scenario and that's um, great, but we want to uh, direct people to a very specific version of your scenario so that we can get the data to train the classifier. So anytime that you create a cohort, you can put any scenario, it doesn't have to be one that you've created into it. Um, and then you get the data for the folks who have done that scenario through your cohort. So it's a really, um, for instructors, if you're a, a teacher educator or another kind of instructor, it's a really good practical tool so that you get your students to the right place. Um, and it's really easy to see whether or not they have completed what you've asked them to, them to complete. And then as a researcher, it can be a really nice tool because if you're looking to collect data from sort of different groups, anytime you create a cohort, you're sort of building a wall around your data. So what we're going to do is have you create a cohort for the scenario that you just made. And the first step is to go to the cohorts button or to the go to the cohorts page at the top of your page. So make sure you're on the cohorts page and it looks like the screen here. And then there's a big purple button that says create a cohort. That's the first step. Whoa, oh, really? Okay. I told you guys, I warned you. All right, everyone here was, was warned that this is not my strong suit. Um, I'm always clicking the wrong place. Okay, so uh, step three is give your cohort a name so that you can find it later. Um, you'll see in the model one, I named it after me and Garen. Imagine that we're co-authors, I put L-A-L-N on it. Um, so just name it something so that when you search for it later, you know that it's yours. And then you hit create and continue. And now this may or may not be something that you're able to do right now um, because your scenario may still be private. And I'm just going to do a quick screen share back into Teacher Moments. So when you have created a scenario, oh, look at that. Beautiful. Oh, I'm not logged in as myself. <sighs> That's frustrating. Okay. Um, Garen, do you want to share for a second? Are you logged in as yourself? Sure. And, yeah, I am. I can do that. I'm still in a play test, a play test version of me over here. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. And uh, one of the things that we said is that when you have a scenario and it's been published, that everyone has access to it. And the caveat to that is that um, when you initially create a scenario, um, what you're going to see is a drop down list. So if I'm doing like here is my demo, create the scenario, um, it starts off in a phase of draft, which means that only the authors or co authors can actually access the scenario. In order to share the scenario for other users to use, you need to turn it to the public stage. So by turning your, your scenario public, that means it's now available on the platform that anyone that could search for the scenario can use it, but you can't add it to a cohort until the scenario has become public. So if you could go to where you were editing your scenarios and change the scenario from this draft stage to this public stage, that's gonna allow us to create cohort links and link the scenario into the cohort. Thanks, Garen. All right, I'm gonna go back to our other slideshow here. And so once your scenario is public, let me share screen again. Okay. Once your scenario is public, you'll be able to search for it and this is where um, it's very handy if you have given it a name that you will remember and that is recognizable um, to you. So once it's marked public, you can search for it. And when you've typed into the search box, it should just pop right up 
underneath. And then when you click on it, it will be added and you can click save and continue. See, this is, you know, all, I'm sorry. I, I warned you, let me save, escape. Okay, let me go back up, all right. So once you have done that, you've saved and continued, and then there should be an opportunity to copy the link for the cohort. And then you can click go to cohort. So make sure that you copy that link because we are about to paste it onto your Firehose slide. So you've put your scenario in, you've copied your link, and now if you can update your Firehose slide with that cohort link, this is what we are going to share with all of you, but we are also gonna be sharing it more broadly. So we are gonna share it with our community of practice. Um, we are gonna share it with uh, the folks in our lab. So we're gonna to try to get as much data over the next couple of days as possible. So it's really important that you get your cohort link onto your Firehose slide in the spot that says link goes here so that we're able to share it with one another and to share it with other folks more broadly. So that's kind of, yes, um, that's a great question. I'm gonna share the link for this slideshow before we go, because I hope that it will be helpful to you to keep looking back on. Okay. All right, good, I'm glad it will be helpful. <laughs> awesome, okay, so we're updating the Firehose slides with that cohort link. And then our next slide is here is sort of after we go, what, what happens next? <laughs> um, so as Garen said before, we are hoping to uh, blast out these scenarios tomorrow at three o'clock. So we hope that you will make any changes before then. And I'm happy to stick on here for a couple minutes um, after three o'clock and Garen is too. If anybody has um, questions, definitely. Um, yeah, feel free to like email your group or we can open up those breakout rooms um, when we're finished in the main session if people want to share um, information in there. We definitely want you to leave here feeling like you know that you have a plan to get your scenarios into some shareable form by tomorrow at 3pm. As, as we've been saying, these do not have to be perfect. The goal is simply, the most important thing is just, do you have an annotation component that's looking at some kind of response? Because we need to have the annotation component in order to train the classifier. Um, and Garen and I, as we said, we'll be happy to stay on if you have any questions you want us to talk, we want to talk about that, um, talk about what your question should be, we definitely want to help. And we want you to leave here feeling like you know what's going on and what you need to do. Um, then we're asking people to play each other's scenarios, um, to play at least two scenarios. If you play three, you'll have played everyone else's scenario. So if you have time over the next couple of days to play a couple of scenarios, um, I would say they're gonna take maybe 10 minutes tops, probably less time, um, cause they're pretty short right now and that's okay. Um, and then if you have access to other people, if you are a teacher educator um, and you wanna take 10 minutes of a class time to, to have students play a scenario or two, um, or if you wanna send them to colleagues or friends, you know, people who, um, get excited about these things. So um, please, we want to get as much data as we can over the next couple of days, because on Wednesday, um, Garen and the rest of the team at TSL and some very kind friends who've offered their help are going to be working on using that data to train classifiers. So we want to get as much data as we can by Wednesday morning. And um, I will show you on the next slide. Uh, if you are able to play a scenario, we just ask you to pop your initials onto the slide for that scenario. And that way people can really easily see like, oh, five people have already done this scenario. I'm going to go and see if there's any that haven't been done yet. Okay, so that's the only reason that we ask you to put that there to try to make it easier um, for others to determine if they should play that scenario because it needs extra data. So that's sort of what's happening. Um, after we go. And then next week, as Garen said, we are going to um, show you how to download that data from your cohort so that you will have access to it. And that's what we're using um, during this week before we see you again next week. But next week, we will show you how you can get all of your data and what you can do with it from there. So that is kind of what we're hoping will happen. Are there any questions about um, what is happening from here? 
over the next couple of days? Or Garen, is there anything that I have not said? Sounds really clear to me, Sarah. I think you've done a great job of summarizing. All right. All right, well then if there are no questions, we have a little um, exit survey that we would love your feedback um, on how this session went, how teacher moments went. Um, so I'm gonna copy and paste this into the chat and we're happy to have you use the last couple of minutes of the session to fill it out so you don't have to do it afterwards and take more time out of your Saturday. Um, and Garen and I are gonna be here to answer any questions about your scenario or anything else related to teacher purpose or really anything, we're just here. Um, and we'll be happy to stay on as long as you have questions for. And I can open the breakout rooms again so that if folks want to check in with their partners, we can do that. And then uh, having said all that, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, I think I speak for me and Garen and JT when I say we have had an amazing time today. And we really appreciate you taking time out of your Saturday to be with us um, to help us uh, imagine the future of teacher moments. That's what we're doing today. So um, thank you so much. And we're here with questions and the breakout rooms are open. And yeah, and we'll see you next Saturday. <laughs>